It's the second day of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Russia, the first since the outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine war. PM Modi was accorded a state of honor upon his touchdown at the Moscow airport yesterday. Later, he also met with Russian President Vladimir Putin, who hosted a private dinner at his residence in Moscow suburb of Novo Orgar Yovo. These are live visuals now coming in of Prime Minister Modi and President Putin. They are uh, uh, going to be... Uh, now uh, holding dialogues uh, as part of the India-Russia summit. This is a formal bilateral meeting now that will be beginning any moment now. These are live pictures coming in from Moscow, Russia, of uh, President Putin, of uh, Russia, and Prime Minister Modi of India. In fact, uh, PM Modi had also uh, uh, put out a special message for Russia on his uh, uh, social media handles. Putin also had expressed gratitude uh, and referred to Modi as a friend. Uh, today, of course, in the morning, Prime Minister Modi had addressed the Indian diaspora. He'd also stressed on the number three. He had stated that he's going to uh, work uh, thrice as hard in his third term to ensure India becomes the third largest economy. Uh, PM Modi also, in fact, uh, visited the Atom exhibition in Moscow. Uh, he was accompanied there, too, by Vladimir Putin. And now, of course, the structured dialogue, the uh, summit, the bilateral is all set to begin. Uh, PM Modi, of course, being hosted there now at Kremlin. Uh, by President Putin. Yesterday it was an off-record meeting, it was, a, uh, it was an informal meeting. Today is, of course, the formal uh, meeting and dialogue before Prime Minister Modi will leave Russia later in the evening for Austria. Now, also, in fact, uh, earlier in the day, uh, he called India and Russia Amar and Prem uh, while speaking with the Indian uh, diaspora. He also announced that India has decided to open two new consulates in Kazan and Yekaterinburg cities in a bid to further boost travel and trade with Russia. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in fact, while also speaking with the diaspora, said uh, that uh, across the globe, Indians are brimming with self-assurance and also said that Bharat is now establishing new global standard milestone. In fact, also, uh, the Prime Minister has uh, today paid tributes uh, to the tomb of the unknown soldier uh, in Moscow. Uh, and uh, he laid a wreath there as well. Uh, in fact, also we are learning in a big development, uh, Russia has agreed to uh, repatriate Indians who have been uh, serving in the Russian army and part of the war with Ukraine. This after India raised the issue uh, on PM Modi's visit to Russia. You can see there the Indian delegation and the Russian delegation is on your screens. They are part of this meeting as well. Uh, this uh, big summit that, of course, is taking place in Moscow this year. This is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's first visit to Moscow uh, in five years. Mahesh Sajdev, former diplomat, is joining us live. We also have Chirayu Tucker, foreign affairs expert, live with us. Sumit Peer, political commentator, is joining us live. Major General J.K. S. Parihar, strategic affairs analyst, is also uh, with us. Uh, Ambassador Sajdev, let me uh, make a start with you after, of course, uh, pleasantries yesterday and also... Uh, the cultural aspect of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's uh, trip with his interaction with the diaspora. It's now the business end of the visit, a structured dialogue all set to begin any moment now uh, as part of the India-Russia summit. What all will be on the table? What all will be the main issues discussed between the two leaders? It's a very important visit, as you have already uh, well documented. Uh, I think uh, it is also... Uh, it also takes place against an international and bilateral context, which are important. Uh, so I think the summit, the, the deliberations, that the plenary mm. talks are going to be uh, full of uh, discussions about the potential, as uh, one uh, one should say here that uh, unlike many other relationships. Uh, India's ties with uh, Russia are top-down ties, where uh, the two leaders at the summit decide a lot of things, which are then implemented by the respective bureaucrac bureaucracies and other politicians. So at this summit, the 16th between the two since President, Prime Minister Modi took power is important. Both uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, Narendra Modi have won their respective elections this year. And uh, they are now poised to work together for their respective second, uh, third 
for fourth terms. And uh, that brings in the futuristic aspects of this relationship, the strategic aspects of this relationship, where uh, we have had some lopsided development. Uh, the trade ties have done remarkably well, thanks to Russian crude exports to India, which has uh, where, where Russia stands at uh, first place for the first time in India, which is the third largest importer of crude in the world. The bilateral uh, economic, bilateral uh, trade ties reached something like $66 billion, uh, but they were 19 to 1 loaded in Russia's favor. India's exports to Russia were only around $4 billion, while the rest was Russian exports to India. That has led to accumulation of huge amount of uh, Indian money with Russia, and uh, the two sides would have to work it out to make this uh, relationship more sustainable. It cannot be done and then with 19 to 1 ratio of imports to exports. So the two sides would be looking at it very imaginatively, putting the money into joint ventures and uh, other areas of investment, etc. in India. Uh, secondly, I think the uh, Russians would like to uh, uh, re-establish their preponderance as the first supplier uh, of military hardware to India, which has uh, been trying to diversify. So that's, that would be of interest to watch. Third thing, as the media goes, uh, could be in terms of nuclear fuel supplies for uh, Russian-made uh, reactors in India. Uh, more could be announced. Space ventures and so on. High-tech-related issues, metallurgical issues could come in. Uh, on uh, In terms of the global context, I think the visit has its own importance. It has been uh, compared to the NATO summit taking place in Washington, D.C., around the same time, but those comparisons are odious and uh, need to be ignored. At the same time, it shows India's strategic autonomy that uh, Prime Minister has visited Moscow uh, for a very dense and impact-prone visit, uh, which is going to reverberate for quite a long time in the bilateral history. Thank you. Shirayu Thakkar, come in here on, on you know, the aspects and, uh, of the uh, uh, relationship that are going to be uh, uh, given a, f a, a further push through this uh, dialogue today. Which sectors do you believe are going to be concentrated on uh, by India and Russia? Where do you see the relationship headed post this visit by PM Modi to Moscow? Uh, good evening, Vinit, and thank you for having me. Uh, I think some of the major sectors uh, Ambassador Sachdev has already uh, highlighted. Uh, this visit, I would say, has two broad elements to it. The first would be the concrete tangibles deliverables of the visit. Uh, we might see some uh, exchange uh, of, of intent on level of uh, defense. Uh, we can see issues regarding uh, trade uh, and other things uh, that have already been mentioned. But there is also a political dimension uh, to this visit, which falls broadly under the intangibles. And there, uh, mutual consultations, both at official level, uh, at the highest level, are important. Uh, also, a lot of matters of high politics are discussed in person uh, rather than over phone. Or, All right, Ajara, uh, you, you know, stay with officials. us. Uh, let's quickly dip in live to these, uh, uh, this, these uh, statements being made by the two leaders. ये अनेक देशों के नागरिकों को पेट्रोल डीजल के कारण बहुत बड़े संकट से गुजरना पड़ा और आज भी गुजरना पड़ रहा है लेकिन हमारे उस कारोबार के कारण हम भारत के नागरिकों को पेट्रोल डीजल के इस मार से बचा पाए इन्फ्लेशन से बचा पाए और स्टेबिलिटी भी ला पाए इसके लिए भी मैं आपका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं во многих странах мира люди сталкиваются с проблемами с топливом, вот, бензин, дизель, 
но благодаря нашей с вами договоренностям в этой сфере, в сфере энергетики, мы их могли обеспечить наших граждан этим топливом, и не только обеспечили, мы могли держать инфляцию под контролем и также обеспечили стабильность. За это я вам весьма признателен. फॉरम में पब्लिकली भारत का जो मेक इन इंडिया इनिशिएटिव है उसकी भरपूर तारीफ की और तारीफ की कितना नहीं आपने भारत में मैन्युफैक्चरिंग की दिशा में कदम उठाए और भारत के मैन्युफैक्चर में आपकी भागीदारी के कारण भारत के नौजवानों के लिए रोजगार के अनेक नए अवसर बने हैं और उसके लिए अनेक क्षेत्रों में विकास के भी एक नए आयाम जुड़े हैं और मैं मानता हूं कि मैन्युफैक्चरिंग के क्षेत्र में आने वाले दिनों में क्योंकि उसके परिणाम बहुत अच्छे मिल रहे हैं और मजबूती मिलेगी ऐसा मुझे लगता है в качестве друга друга Индии на разных форумах вы хвалите нашу компанию, нашу программу делая в Индии и только хвалите, вы предпринимаете конкретные шаги в этом направлении. И благодаря нашей, нашему партнерству индийская молодежь получает новые возможности, создаются новые рабочие места для них. Поэтому мы видим очень большие перспективы для развития, развития нашего сотрудничества и тем самым развития нашей страны. И я полностью уверен, что в сфере производства нас ждет очень хорошие перспективы в будущем, и мы уже видим результаты, и мы продолжим работу в этом направлении. एक्सलेंसी वैसे तो हमारा ये जो द्विपक्षीय वार्ता का कार्यक्रम 25 साल से चल रहा है 22 बार हम मिल चुके हैं लेकिन शायद ये मीटिंग ऐसी है कि पूरे विश्व का ध्यान मेरी इस यात्रा पर केंद्रित हुआ है और पूरी विश्व इस यात्रा के भांति भांति के मीनिंग निकाल रहा है Друг с, друг с другом связаны уже 25 лет, и мы проводим 22-й по счету второй сами. Но фокус мирового сообщества является, фокусом является вот мой нынешний визит. Весь мир смотрит на это с большим интересом. Кал, апне мы дяпне Нивастан прогуляя, орек сатче доски рупме. Кал, шам амне кариб чар панч гнте так साथ रहे अनेक विषयों पर हमने बातें की और मुझे खुशी हुई कि यूक्रेन के विषय में हम दोनों अपने अपने विचार खुले मन से विस्तार से हम उसकी चर्चा कर पाए और बड़े आदर के साथ एक दूसरे के विचारों को हमने सुनने समझने का प्रयास किया и вчера в вашей резиденции у нас была прекрасная возможность проводить 4 или 5 часов. Мы в домашней обстановке обсуждали все вопросы. И я очень рад, что и по тематике Украины мы обменивались мнениями в открытом ключе, друг друга с уважением относились друг к мнению друг друга, и мы спокойно разговаривали. जी ट्वेंटी की सफलता के साथ साथ ग्लोबल साउथ की आवाज बनकर के मक्कमता पूर्वक अपनी बातें रखता रहा है और उसके कारण स्वाभाविक रूप से आज ग्लोबल साउथ की दुनिया में शांति की जो आकांक्षा है अपेक्षा है उसको भी मैंने भरी भांति कल आपके सामने प्रस्तुत किया था Ваше превосходство, вы видели в ходе нашего председательства в Большой Двадцатке, Индия предоставила всему мировому сообществу голос стран глобального юга. И вчера в ходе наших разговоров у меня была возможность и представить эти вопросы, связанные с странами глобального юга, вам. Акселенция Юдда Ху, Сангар Шу, Атангвади Хамле Ху, मानवता में विश्वास करना वाला हर व्यक्ति जब जानहानि होती है तब बहुत पीड़ित होता है लेकिन उसमें भी जब मासूम बच्चों की कत्ल होती है 
मासूम बच्चों को मरते हुए देखते हैं तब हृदय छलनी हो जाता है और वो दर्द बहुत भयानक होता है और इस विषय में भी आपसे विस्तार से चर्चा हुई Любой верующий в человечество, человек ощущает боль, когда умирают дети, и особенно когда умирают ни, ни в чем не винные дети. Когда мы ощущаем такую боль, то сердце просто взрывается. И я имел возможность поговорить об этих вопросах с вами вчера. Экселенсик Митра Генанте мне всегда говорил, कि हमारी भावी पीढ़ी के उज्ज्वल भविष्य के लिए शांति सर्वाधिक आवश्यक है लेकिन मैं ये भी जानता हूं कि युद्ध के मैदान में समाधान संभव नहीं होता है बम बंदूक और गोलियों के बीच समाधान और शांति वार्ताएं सफल नहीं होती हैं और हमने वार्ता के माध्यम से ही शांति के रास्ते अपनाने को भी है। कच्चे से वास्तव में दुर्गा या वाम सिद्ध कर रहे हैं कि для всех его всех его будущего наших будущих поколений мир обязательен, поэтому мы считаем, что война не решение, решение не может быть посредством войны, бомбы, ракеты и винтовки не могут обеспечивать этот мир. एक्सलेंसी मुझे इस बात का संतोष है कि कल इतने खुले मन से आप बात कर रहे थे कोई लीपा पोती नहीं थी कोई कार्टेन नहीं था और मैंने देखा कि हमारी बातचीत में से बहुत सारे इंटरेस्टिंग आइडिया निकले एक नई सोच मैं महसूस कर रहा हूं और नई सोच सामने आई है एक्सलेंसी कल हमारी बात में ये भी हमारा मन बना था और शांति की बहाली में भारत हर संभव सहयोग करने के लिए तैयार है और आपका भी सानुकूल विचार सुनकर के मुझे बहुत खुशी हुई और मैं भी आपको भी आश्वस्त करता हूं और विश्व समुदाय को भी आश्वस्त करता हूं कि भारत शांति के पक्ष में है और शांति के लिए मेरे मित्र राष्ट्रपति पुतिन की कल बातों को सुनकर के मेरे मन में एक आशा पैदा हुई है और मैं इसके लिए आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं और मीडिया जगत के मित्रों को भी मैं कहूंगा पासी बात и вам вас заверить, что Индия всегда была на стороне мира. И мы, я, я, когда я вас слышал, я чувствовал оптимизм и э, возникли надежды на будущее. Поэтому хочу вас за это поблагодарить. И также хотел бы сказать друзьям и СМИ большое спасибо. Спасибо. Those, of course, were the uh, words by uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Chirayu Thakkar, your quick uh, comment on uh, PM Modi's uh, opening statement there ahead of the uh, uh, bilateral with Russia. The PM, of course, talking about uh, how Russia has helped uh, India, particularly, of course, in the energy sector, but in other domains too, uh, ahead of this uh, meeting in an effort to further embolden our strategic partnership. Uh, yes, so like... Uh, some quick points uh, from what PM just said. Uh, a, a, PM very clearly told that India's 
uh, relationship with Russia is on its own. Uh, PM is not taking anybody's side and making Ukraine Ukraine's. Uh, India genuinely believes in peace, and that's why PM is talking what he's talking regarding Ukraine. Second, he took a whale dig at the Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, by saying that you know the world is taking meanings out of our meeting. Uh, so that was again a very whale dig, and it was very unbecoming of uh, President Zelensky to put that tweet out the way he uh, presented uh, uh, the Prime Minister's visit. Third thing was the Prime Minister again made a very clear point that now is not the time for war or this would not be won through uh, one on the battlefield. So it's time for diplomacy. Perhaps it is advisable for both sides to sit together. So these were some of the major points in his brief intervention that I found uh, very striking and I hope uh, something comes out of it. The tone and tenor, Sumit Peer, clearly set by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, head of this uh, uh, bilateral summit. Uh, clearly, of course, uh, uh, PM has uh, spoken uh, uh, highly of uh, Putin's, uh, uh, you know, welcome to him. Uh, also, of course, uh, the, the warmth that he showed ever since Narendra Modi has landed uh, in Moscow. And also, most importantly, the thrust on energy uh, coming out as well on energy cooperation between the two nations. Uh, we do know, of course, also uh, business, trade, uh, other avenues of our relationship are going to also be uh, spoken about in this uh, uh, bilateral meeting. Uh, Vinay, thank you for having me on your show. In fact, uh, there are a couple of things which we just heard. First of all, Prime Minister Modi is thanking uh, Prime Minister, uh, President Putin for all the support on the energy sector. We know over 65% of the arsenal comes from Russia. We know our gaganauts or the astronauts are trained in Russia right now. We know when we speak, 37,000 rifles have reached from Russia, AK-203. We know two trains full of coal are on the way from INSST, from Russia to India, the International Outside Transport Corridor. We know the best uh, anti-tank, uh, you know, that armament with Russia manufactures is going to manufacture in India. And we also know Mr. Lavrov has said that 60% of the trade will continue to be in rupee ruble. But earlier, there were speculations of getting yuan and all involved that is out of the card. Now, what we want from now, we want a couple of things. First of all, we want, uh, we want our energy security to be kind of taken care. Secondly, we want to do AM for weapons. We want Russians to do a complete technology transfer because which Russia is not doing right now. So we have we have offers from the West where they are ready to do the complete technology transfers. We want these AMs, these spears to be manufactured in India. Another point of contention is we have these S500 batteries which are ordered five. We have got three S400. We need two more batteries which have to come to us. That will be a part of discussion. Then these 200 men which were in Russian army, some of them were, you know, entrapped there by some agents from Dubai and all. That issue sorted out now. Now, besides that, what we want, we want to help Russia with the balance of trade because though we have saved $25 billion in buying crude from Russia, but still we want to sort out this balance of trade. How is How are we going to do to the Russia? How are we going to propose to the Russia? Now, with it, we are also talking of collaboration on Su-57, which is the fifth-generation fighter. And uh, there are some speculations, I mean, which people in the grapevine are talking. Uh, Russia might have some interesting documents about a Congress leader who some believe allegedly might be a KGB agent formally. I mean, there was speculation some documents uh, Russia might hand over to Pre President Prime Minister Modi. And as we know that, uh, uh, there are also speculations and some alleged uh, talk that, you know, uh, when he was in Italy, uh, whatever was the proceedings of the Augusta was Westland case, which were kept in archives, which was which was not supposed to be given out. It is assumed, presumed, or some people are talking here, Georgia Meloni might have given to Prime Minister Modi. So there are these things which we are going to talk with Russia. And we have also done a logistic arrangement with Russia, because now at a time for war, we can use their ships, we can, you know, sorry, we can use their ports, we can use their military installations for refueling, for all the logistics help. Now, imagine, Uday, if there's a war, and vice versa for Russia, if there's a war, in with which country will have a war and will need those assets of Russia? The only country I can think of is China. So China is very much it. Yesterday, Russian spokesperson said that West is jealously watching this, uh, this visit, quote unquote, and the Chinese have given a very atrocious statement that, you know, India is a lackey of West and all that because Chinese are rattled. What they thought this India-Russia relation is, you know, drifting away. India has gone to the West. Prime Minister Modi will not do a first bilateral to Russia. He will not depart from the, you know, what the president has been. The president is going to a nearby country like, Bhut like Bhutan and Maldives now. So choosing Russia, going after a Russian-Ukrainian conflict, it also sends a very strong message to Chinese. And let me tell you one more difference. 
Here we have Prime Minister Modi talking to Vladimir Putin directly. While in Chinese have been literally begging us even for a ministerial to ministerial level talk. We meet a Chinese ministers, Wangi and all on the sidelines. There is no bilateral even at a foreign mission level. Here it is between the Russian president and the Indian Prime Minister. Russians, uh, sorry, Chinese are not happy about it. And yesterday, the number two man in command after Vladimir Putin welcomed Prime Minister Modi, came to the airport, which is again not a protocol in Russia. And if you see, when she was there, a lower ranking officer had come to visit him. So these all things are irking Chinese. And if you look at the Indians, you know, we had some problems with the GE engine. Russians are saying, we'll give you the engines. So spheres, fuel, engine, S-400, diaspora, technology, space. We are collaborating in a lot of things. And Russians need a lot of help and support from our side because they are facing these sanctions. And let me tell you, sir, even with the highest sanctioned country in the world, Russia has again come up to a high income country in the world, which is a very good news for Russia. And Russians are celebrating it. And right now, what we saw is that the Prime Minister Modi has spoken to Mr. Putin directly. Look, this cannot be settled on the battleground. We have to end the war. And he says, Aapke suja bade achhe I mean, even Prime Minister, you know, President Putin is talking of settling this war. And remember, uh, Prime Minister Modi met Zelensky at G7. There's something which happened, it spoke. After that, we had Jack Sullivan here. What did Jack Sullivan talk to? Ajit Doval ji, Dr. Jay Shankar and Prime Minister Modi. We don't know. And now Prime Minister Modi is in Russia and talking to Vladimir Putin. And let me take you back. Let me take you back to a few months wherein President Donald Trump said, I can settle this war in a couple of days. Then suddenly before Prime Minister Modi's visit, Vladimir Putin says, okay, if you can settle this war in a couple of days, where is the proposal? So, Uday, a lot of things are happening. That is why Prime Minister Modi said, ke pure vishwa ki nazar mere is dore pe. the whole world is watching. It means the West, it means the China, it means the CIS countries, it means Pakistan, it means literally everybody is having eyes on this summit. That's why people are comparing it with a NATO summit and all, because this summit can set the tone of the global relations. If Prime Minister Modi is able to strike a middle ground between Zelensky and, you know, Putin and something, some ideas of Trump, then we know we are talking of ending this bloody war which has cost so many lives. So this is the new takeaway. And for India, we are getting a lot of things. And President Putin realizes one thing. West is ready to give all the weapons to us with technology transfer. I believe, though it may not come out, Prime Minister Modi will ask for a complete technology transfer. I'll tell you a difference. Today, we are manufacturing Brahmos. But if we have to export Brahmos to any other country, we need to take Russian approval. Now, if you have a complete technology transfer, it becomes your IPR. When we make the weapon in India, we can export it to any country. That will be one main point which Prime Minister Modi will talk. And all the spares should be manufactured now in India. We can give you the royalty. We can give you the money whatever has to be paid, that is not a problem. But due to Russian-Ukrainian conflict, we don't want that to happen. And Russia realizes that India is slightly, slowly, slowly moving to Western platforms. If they have to get India back to the Russian platforms and if they have to make sure India sticks with the Russian platforms, they have to offer us something which the West is not offering. So what is that uh, Mr. Putin will offer Prime Minister Modi? That will not come up. But eventually, we'll yes. come to know all these things. So that Absolutely. Major General J.K. Pariyar, come in here. Major General J.K. Pariyar, come in here on these talks, uh, on what you believe the focus areas, the thrust areas will be. Where is this relationship with India and Russia headed post uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's departure from Moscow after this historic summit? One thing is very clear, that the Ukraine remains the topmost point of discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have a direct dialogue of two presidents and prime minister uh, in camera, so obviously before that, a lot of homework has been carried out by the both uh, sides' uh, different ministries. So Ukraine remains the first uh, part of it. Second, we have seen that the Indians, those who have been hired uh, illegally by the Russians and put into the Ukraine war, they are returning back and coming. And uh, Prime Minister Modi has made it very clear. His, he gave a message to the media. He used the word, for media, possible. That possible word is used for the uh, ceasefire and the uh, amicable solution to the uh, Ukraine and Russia conflict. That is a very, very big message. His word possible, I think, is to the entire world, which he has been put uh, in this uh, open forum. About uh, other issues, yes, uh, we are interested in relaws. We are interested in INSTC. These issues would have been discussed. And uh, defense uh, deal of the making the anti-tank missiles in the India, Sumit has mentioned about Brahmos and all those. Uh, definitely, every part would have been discussed, which will come... Uh, in a joint, uh, uh, once it is uh, issued this statement. But 
by and large uh, president uh, putin and uh, prime minister modi's visit is has been very successful and it has drawn the attention from all, all over the world russia and uh, india are meeting in the moscow every second of this movement was watched by the china pakistan european countries america everywhere that is a credit what the india holds to